that's your presentation that we're going to go into detail in there. Yeah, we can if you want to. What do you think? Yeah, I think it doesn't make any difference. Is this it for people? Well, we're expecting Jeff. Okay. We'll start out with uh, the regular Woodland Park Planning Commission regular meeting agenda, 7 p.m. 26th. Uh, we'll start out with the order and roll call. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, beginning with Vicki Good. Here. Jerry Penland. Here. Peter Scanlon. Here. Charles Schrader. Here. John DeVoe. Here. And for the record, Ellen Carrick and Ken Hartsfield are not here today, and Jeff Watt. Oh, did I forget Lee Brown? Lee Brown? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and for the record, Jeff Watson has not arrived yet. If you would uh, join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. Next item is approval of minutes, August 22nd, 2019. Anybody have any corrections, additions, changes? Okay. Uh, motion to approve minutes. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Item four, public hearings. Um, a flood hazard development plan 19-001, one request for a flood hazard development permit adjacent to East Fork and Free, uh, East F Fork Fountain Creek. Well, that's a mouthful. It's basically 114 Baldwin across from the high school. Okay, the applicant has requested to continue that until October 24th. So, does anybody have any objection to that? that delay till that? Okay, we're good with that. Just briefly, um, October 10th, uh, we will plan to host a meeting. We will continue the work session that we're going to begin this evening uh, regarding the discussion of single family uses in multifamily zones. So we will dedicate uh, the majority of that meeting work session to that discussion. This evening, I will be presenting background information and an introduction to that discussion. So we hope that everyone in the next two weeks will begin to think about recommendations and ideas uh, for potential code amendments dealing with the discussion of single family uses in the multifamily zone. So that's October 10th. And then uh, what you, the action that you just took, we will have a meeting on October 24th regarding this flood hazard uh, development permit and then continue hosting work sessions if necessary as we discuss uh, uh, potential code amendments. And the last thing I have is that on your desk is the um, handouts 
from last August, August 27th, where SIRSA, our insurance company, and their attorney, Sam Light, was here. How many of you attended that workshop? Vicki and, okay. Then um, I have on your desk a three-page summary of what the uh, insurance company attorney provided to us in terms of your quasi-judicial uh, capacity, what it means, uh, and the various roles that you have in terms of both legislative items and uh, quasi-judicial items. So I encourage you to read through that. Most of you are very good and familiar about ex parte communication and uh, also making sure that you're uh, reviewing the evidence as presented during the hearings, uh, the staff report, and then making uh, decisions and deliberations. The third page deals with emails um, for both elected and appointed uh, officials. And I would just uh, reiterate the last bullet is above all, never use your email to discuss a pending quasi-judicial matter. So when in doubt, do call the staff if you have any questions, but uh, please do read through the handouts and then we will be providing you with this little booklet that is published by uh, SIRSA and CML, and it is entitled Ethics, Liability, and Best Practices for Elected Officials. Although it is directed mostly at the city council elected officials, there is great advice in this book for appointed officials who are sitting uh, reviewing land use cases that are quasi-judicial. So that will be forthcoming as soon as we get a hold of those books. That's all that I have for reports. Oh, yes, absolutely. I'm sorry that we will certainly put the QJ on all the agenda items. But it, it is very simple. Uh, a QJ item has a private property owner who has submitted an application that is requesting a certain action or uh, request for entitlement, whether it's a zoning, a subdivision, a conditional use permit, are all examples when we have a private property owner with an application. So that, those are your quasi-judicial cases. Um, tonight, we're talking about legislative cases, which aren't really cases, legislative actions that have to do with amending the codes or the law. So it's really pretty simple to determine. I understand, but I think it had been mentioned by several people in the past, and I just want to make sure that that would be done. Absolutely. Anybody else? We're going to adjourn to the work session. Two things we're going to do in the work session, and we actually get to shut these off. Um, is the discussion of the Municipal Code 1851-60 and 1806, setback variances and that type of stuff. That we will do in, in detail. We will talk about that in detail. The second item, discussion of single family uses and multi-family zones, we will not discuss in detail. Sally's gonna give us a update of what brought, it, brought us up to this point, and at that point, we will continue that. We'll have two weeks to ask questions and get involved when we come back here on the 10th of October to finish that up. Just wanted everybody to understand that. So, um, word of adjustment, please come up and join us. If you
you know, can't find a place for a chair, drag one with you. And uh, I, uh, I would question, we adjourn? A motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second. We're adjourned.